What up is Marcus Stice Evil Dads? What do we do with injuries? Now we have Brees Hall, Mike Williams, uh, along with Javante Williams, and I didn't get to actually really put out a good uh, video on what do we do with some of these dynasty videos, or what do we do with some of these dynasty injuries, especially Brees Hall, especially Javante Williams. What do we expect from their outcome? Uh, we've seen some previous injuries last year, uh, whether it's been Travis Etienne, whether it's been Cam Akers, J.K. Dobbins, and we've seen the, their recovery, and we've seen previous injuries as well. Uh, let's start off with Javante Williams. He has the more severe of the two injuries when it becomes knee injuries. Uh, we know ACL injuries, and a lot of times they're going to have a meniscus tear, which is basically a jello padding in between the knees. But when we have other ligaments as well, then we're talking about that 11 months of recovery. Sometimes it's a little bit earlier, sometimes it's a little bit later. Uh, we're pushing that 12, 13, 14 months, and that's why you see J.K. Dobbins basically having some issues of recovering into this beginning part of the 20. 2022 season so think of 2023 the beginning of Javante uh, it might be a slow process for him one of the most important things to do dynasty especially if you're not one of those top like three four teams is to try to figure out the handcuff when the next season comes along I, I think that's the biggest thing that I have learned uh, I have been somebody that has struggled the last two years in my main league due to injuries. I have a 16-team league, and I have some of the most dominant running back. I mean, you know, I have, like, the best running back backfield possible. Last year, I had J.K. Dobbins, and I was drafting um, Javante Williams, ETN, and I had DeAndre Swift. Of course, we saw that ETN and J.K. Dobbins both out for the year almost immediately, and then all of a sudden I was left with Swift, who got hurt a bunch, and then I was left with Javante, who was slow rolling into the the um, slow rolling into the season, and so then I trade J.K. Dobbins for and a couple of things for Brees Hall. Hey, you can already kind of read where this picture is going to go. I was so excited for this year. I was like, man, I have four stud running backs: Swift, uh, Javante, Brees Hall and Travis Etienne, and guess what? I'm now down to half again. I am now, well, a third, may, or a fourth of them maybe even, because we have Swift Hurt, and we have Travis Etienne. So maybe I'm even worse than last year. Who knows? Travis Etienne, of course, has that full, uh, he has the full spot there. And we see now James Robinson getting traded over into the, being a New York Jet. In fact, that doesn't concern me at all anyway. So Javante, Brees Hall, they are still going to be considered, to me, top six, seven running backs. Brees Hall over Javante. Brees Hall has shown how great he truly can be. I mean, he is definitely the running back. If he, if he comes back healthy next year, you're talking about potentially running back number one overall. Now, Bijan is going to have a big fight into it, and Jonathan Taylor is going to hold on to that dear life. And I think CMC is going to be moving away from that top, or that, that top three, four category just because of due to age. But that 49er situation looks beautiful. And so I am not trading these running backs unless I'm getting... 90 95 percent 90 95 cents on the dollar and, and and that is if i'm only contending a top again three team uh really in my league if i am not a top three team i am okay either acquiring these types of injured players for 90 95 95 cents on the dollar like this is a time to buy them uh understand that you're again it doesn't matter it, it's gonna do a twofold thing and this is what I think people understand the first part, not the second part. The first part is you get an asset that is going to be probably, you're paying low. You're paying a, a lesser of a premium than you did just last week. If you had to pay for Brees Hall, it was going to be a ton. Now it's 90 cents on the dollar. Also, you are now picking a player that cannot help you for this season. So your 2023 draft position is likely to be higher. Like it's likely to be, more towards one versus towards 12 or 16 or how many ever teams you have and that is a crucial point because the difference between four and six or four and five or three and five is incredibly uh i mean it, it can be a huge gap a huge tear break i mean i've talked i've seen this in past drafts too it's where it's like do you want the Javante, the Pitts, unfortunately Pitts is having a bad year, Chase, or do you want to move back a couple of spots and do you want to get stuck with Michael Carter, Trey Sermon, uh, a reach in that regards, or uh, another wide receiver um, like Rashad Bateman um, or Terrace Marshall. Like You see some of these players, and there's a gap between the Jamar Chases, the Javante Williams. So you want to get into that area uh, as, as high as you possibly can. So again, 90 cents on the dollar, 
I am buying them. Uh, not if I'm a contender, of course, because you need you need points this year uh, again. But you have to be a top three team after this injury, and that's gonna be hard. You have to self reflect and say, "Hey, am I?" And if you are kind of in that borderline, that four or five range, uh, you really have a, a really hard gap here to do because players like Mike Williams and stuff, they're going to come back. You can't really buy low on those types of players, but you really you have a decision to make right now. And the decision is, do you have enough to compete and be that team that makes the playoffs, might win a couple games and luck into a championship? It happens. It happens. I've seen it from year to year. Usually it's a top two or three team that ends up de de defeating everybody. And you can tell those team who those teams are. Or are you just going to start the sell-off early so you, then you don't get pick 8 of 12 or 9 of 12 or 7 of 12? You get pick 3 of 12. And then you accumulate Javante Williams or you have Javante Williams or you have Brees Hall. And then for your 2023 season, it's going to look that much better to add a Jameer Gibbs or add um, – another stud wide receiver to that roster. Uh, plus, you're going to be selling some players away. So if you sell some players away or acquire more injured players, uh, again, your team is just going to look that much better for the 2023 season. So this is a big time. I just want to come out here on uh, Wednesday to give you guys an idea of like, this is, this is the thoughts. This is the process of Dynasty. You can't win every year. But I, I, I just told a team, a, a good buddy of mine, who just lost players of injury and then had underperforming players, uh, whether it was players like Kyle Pitts um, that were on his roster. And I was like, hey, you have choices to make here. You have some 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 key like key uh, center stone pieces. You have Justin Jefferson. You have Kyle Pitts. You don't have much else. Your depth has basically been destroyed because of injuries and underperformance. It's time just to sell. And he just started selling away and got some really good draft capital for players that are now. I mean, the, the key is if you don't trade now, your player, that player might get hurt and then have either little value, lesser value or no value. And if you have that, that's going to be a huge problem. Um, I saw this with a team that had um, Coriel Patterson last year, or I've seen other players where it's like, man, they should just sell. They need to start selling their players. They don't. They accidentally win a couple games. And they either get pushed back into from two to four or five, and then that screws them. Or they get into a situation um, where that player gets hurt, and now they can't trade them. It's like, well, now, now you're stuck with another aging asset that's 27-year-old running back, and you should have sold them. So, again, injuries. Mike Williams is another injury. High ankle sprain. Going to be out for probably for a couple weeks here. Uh, Keenan Allen. He doesn't look great. Hopefully, he comes back after the bye week and looks a lot better here. I mean, players that I'm not selling that are hurt. I mean, Herbert is not injury designated anymore. So, I mean, but they, I mean, there's I'm trying to think of any other um, running backs that I think that's pretty much it. I'm pretty sure all my players are just the players that are getting hurt. But I I have one league that literally is like the it was it was a team that was top two for sure, potentially the best team, and that team of all good great running backs and T Higgins and Chris Godwin and Mike Williams and Aaron Rodgers and um Dak and all the uh, everybody's gonna everybody's hurt or underperformed George Kittle it's like everyone has been other underperformed or hurt and I am now at week seven sitting there going whew can I survive these injuries can I go for it and um lots of pondering lots of pondering might be selling off there so all right, so this is Marcus Dice Dance. Peace out. We will see you tomorrow.